Hi everyone, it's Terry. Today I'm going to show you how to create motif stitches in PE Design 11. If you own Palette 11, it works the same way. If you look at this screen, I have a motif stitch that's used as a fill, and I also have a motif stitch that was created on the outside that is a stocking. The reason I'm interested in creating the motif stitches is because I want to be able to create a stitch for my luminaire with upgrade kit 3 I have the ability to use a custom line fill so we'll go into options and go to programmable stitch creator when you go to programmable stitch creator you have the ability to create a motif stitch you also can create stamps and other types of fills. Now, typically I like to use artwork whenever I'm working on creating a motif stitch. So I'll go into my open template and I'll open a raster file. And I happen to have a few pieces of artwork that I purchased. You will notice that you can move that line which is your actually your stitch line and that's your beginning stitch in blue and your ending stitch is in red and depending on what you're making you might want to move that down to the bottom if you were working with a fill for your software you might want to do that but if you're going to have an outline that you use within My Design Center or IQ Designer, I recommend that you create your stitch above the line. And I'm going to show you an example of some of the things that you need to think about as you're doing this. So I'm opening up a template and like I said, this needs to be a raster file. It's a a bitmap or a TIFF or a JPEG or a PNG file and the file that I'm using right here is a simple design that is a Christmas tree. So I opened up the file type which was PNG and when I open it I'll get that template on the screen. You want to resize the template and you can see there's a red box around it. So grab the lower corner and move it up if you can and then go ahead and grab one of those handles and resize it. I like to like I said place these on the line because you're going to be using them as an outline in your My Design Center and I will show you how I created this one and I made a mistake but it's good because it is going to show you some of the things you need to think about. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to adjust that template and you can adjust the transparency. And you can also turn on grid lines. For this, grid line would be good. You don't want one that's too large because it's going to actually snap to those grid lines. If you have curves, then you want to turn that grid line off. So what I'm doing is I'm going to reduce it down to the grid line that, I, that will actually fit those points on the outside of the tree. And I'll change the base of this tree some. Remember, this is just artwork, and you want to make it easy for yourself. So when you select a point, you want to click and add some points. And these are, think of them kind of like where your stitches will be. You'll grab that point by right-clicking with, your, excuse me, left-clicking with your mouse, and drop it on wherever you want to drop it. When I started out with this, I was going to follow that narrow path that I had, 
for tree trunk and I made made some design changes right off. You can see it over on the far right, that was the end point. If you get confused, move your points out like I did so that you can move around and adjust things. So we're going to go ahead and create the trunk of this tree. And if I decided that I didn't like something, I can delete a point. Which I will do in a minute okay. and we'll continue adding points since this is such a simple design and you see I grabbed the wrong point there so now I drag that point out of the way so that I can determine where it needs to go or I can delete a point which is what I chose to do. And I want to stay on this green line because this is going to follow my shape whenever I go into either the software or into my design center. So we'll go ahead and drag it up to the top of the tree. You notice that it snapped a little bit off uh, the center of that tree but nobody is going to know that when this is finished. Like I said, it's a good visual reference for you to create something. And now we're going to move to the, the bottom of that tree. And I'll go ahead and create some overlapping points so that I create and close up the base of it. And then I'll go ahead and move that back to the center line. Now I'm ready to save this file. So I go to up in the upper left to file and I save it and give it a name. And if you have multiple Christmas trees like I do here, I recommend that you add a number after it. I'm using 12.5 millimeters as my default size. That's small if you think about it, but you can adjust the size of it. I'll have to play around with that more whenever I actually create the, the motifs that we need for our machines because I'm not quite sure how it's going to react on the machine size. Now what I'm going to do is go back to the software side to layout and editing and what I want to do is to apply that to the outline so I'm going to create a fill stitch in the center that way it makes it not so busy but under that sewing attributes and if you close it you can go up to the view window click on the attributes and you can see that you can open and close your sewing text and color palette attributes. And we'll go ahead and under the, the outline stitches, we'll select that tree. So I found the tree at the top and managed to skip right by. We'll open it up. It comes in small and we'll go ahead and we'll adjust the size maintaining the aspect ratio and so I made it fairly large and one of the things that you're going to see is because I left that line along that baseline from the beginning of that design window to the end of it when it's following the shape it's following that as a straight line so that's when I realized I needed to change what I'm doing so that I didn't have those sections that were straight and I need to think about a little bit about how I'm going to do that. So what we're going to do is we'll go back into programmable stitch creator 
and we're going to open up that same file so we can edit it so we're looking for the Christmas tree file and I'm just going to move that baseline and move it closer to the outside of that tree and I'll delete a stitch so that I can do that and move the end point. Now we'll save it again. So we'll go to File, Save As, and make sure I save it with the right name. I selected the right name and I chose save and we'll say yes. Now we're going to go back into layout and editing and because you reused that motif and you changed it, you need to select it again. So we'll select it. We'll have to resize it again. So we'll resize it and I'm guessing at a lot of this because again until I have the software in my hands for the update or upgrade and I have a chance to try this out I really don't know what size I should make it but you can see this follows the curve so much better than before and you have the ability to go in and adjust the spacing of these designs. I'm Terry Maffitt. Please join me in my Facebook group, Just Stitching with the Brother Luminaire. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks and have a great day.